Bleacher Report recently wrote that the Cleveland Browns' moneyball approach is hurting the NFL. The writer is entitled to his opinion but his view is incredibly short-sighted. To start, the Browns are not employing a moneyball approach. Outlets were quick to make the connection between Chief Strategy Officer Paul D. Podesta's role in the cinematic hit Moneyball with Brad Pitt and Jonah Hill and his budding presence in Cleveland's front office. The similarities end there. The NFL has a hard salary cap so the need to maximize value is lessened. The New York Yankees and the Oakland Athletics are not competing for free agents in the same manner as the Green Bay Packers and New York Jets. The playing field is even in the NFL while the Yankees may field a roster worth five times as much as the Athletics any given year. If the Browns could have signed wide receiver Antonio Brown to a deal worth $17 million a year like the one that he agreed to in Pittsburgh they probably would have taken that deal. Cleveland presented the highest free agent offers to center J.C. Tritter, safety Tony Jefferson and offensive guard Kevin Zeitler this year alone. The argument was made that tanking for a better draft choice creates a competitive imbalance. In case anyone has missed the past 18 years, the Browns have only been competitive in one or two seasons. A handful of teams have to be at the bottom so others can succeed. Who cares how they end up at the bottom tanking is objective. Cleveland's plan was to get younger and create cap space to be competitive for premier free agents and make creative decisions like they did when they acquired quarterback Brock Osweiler for a draft choice, which was also unpopular among traditionalists. Cleveland's front office will never admit that they were tanking even though it may appear as such on the outside. The roster may have lacked talent but the players and coaches were putting forth maximum effort. The Browns are clearly building through the draft and supplementing their roster through free agency with young players. Over the past two years, they have selected 24 players in the NFL draft. An NFL best 13 more picks are under their control for the 2018 NFL draft before compensatory choices are even announced. If it takes a few years for Cleveland to become competitive, then so be it. At least they are trying something new. It's better than being stuck in neural while other teams are racing around the track, which has been the case for decades. The NFL can wait another few years if it means a traditional member of the league becomes more competitive. In the meantime, it's doubtful that the NFL has been lamenting the additional exposure and buzz that comes with releasing players such as Osweiler, Joe Hayden, Dante Whitner and more. Detractors of Cleveland's strategy have pointed to the release of established players to argue their point. However, how well have Carlos Dansby and Whitner done elsewhere were teams lining up to sign Osweiler Andrew Hawkins retired? Gary Barnage, John Greco, Randy Starks and Brian Hartline have been unable to find employment elsewhere. Those players contributed to teams that have not won more than seven games in a year since 2007. It's not like they were setting the world on fire. Everyone has an opinion on what the Browns are trying to do with their franchise. Right or wrong, those opinions will be forgotten in the years to come anyway.